So I felt like we could go ahead and be Garfield today and go ahead and eat some lasagna. Ooh. So it is a little bit late right now to be cooking this lasagna during the week, but it's okay because that way I don't have to cook for the rest of the week. You got to cook smarter, not harder, right? So the good thing is because of that, I already prepped a lot of the stuff off camera for you. We got some onions right here, some shredded cheese that's going to go on top of the lasagna. This is the mozzarella. It's going to go in between the layers. Now, you want to use this fresh mozzarella because this is the one that's going to give you that stringy look, you know, once you cut it up. All right. Now, you know we're going to sneak in those vegetables because we're going to do it just like we do our pasta sauce sometimes when you're cleaning out your refrigerator or you just got a little bit of this, a little bit of that. We're going to add some spinach in our ricotta cheese mixture, and that's going to be good. If y'all have never had some spinach in your lasagna, go ahead and give it a try. I'm telling you, you was not going to be disappointed. So we're going to go ahead and talk about the meat that we want to use, okay? Now, when making lasagna, I always try to add a variety of different meats because you want that meaty sauce. So we got some sausage right here and some ground beef. If I had some ground pork, which I've been looking for all dang one week, by the way, I would have added that too. And of course, you can make your own, but I don't feel like it. That's why I'm looking for the ground up one that's already in the store prep. But it's okay. And y'all know I love to show you the meat prices, you know, for the large families. You got to look out for them deals. This package was originally $14. It got marked down to $12.49. And then I ended up buying it at $7.14. And it was packaged the same day. Okay. I don't know how this big old thing of meat became marked down, packaged on the same day. But that was a good deal. So right here, I'm just going to add some oil to the pan. And we're going to go ahead and start with our onions. Now, I was debating if I was going to use that whole pack of ground beef because normally I like to use three parts meat. So ground beef, some type of sausage or the ground pork. But since I don't have the ground pork, we're going to go ahead and just use this whole pack of ground beef in there. And I'm about to show y'all how to do the sausage. Okay. We're not going to put it just like this. So keep watching. Okay. Okay. Let's break that up a little bit. So hopefully by the time we finish adding all the meat in here and the sauce, we're not going to be overflowing this pan because that ain't going to be a good thing. Sometimes you can find sauces like this that's already out the casing and in the package like this. They didn't have any, which is fine. We're going to take it right out the casing. You're just going to slice it right down the middle. And that way, all you need is just the sausage itself. Y'all see that? Just take the casing off. Don't worry about if you can't get the ground up one that's already pre-made like that. All you got to do is just do it yourself. There's nothing to it. And we're going to do the same thing for all of them. How easy is that? Go ahead and comment down below if y'all do this all the time already. Look, see, you already know the tricks of the trade in the kitchen. Look at that. It just come right off. So go ahead and just, you know, do what you normally do. Just go ahead and chop it up. That's why I love to just take it out the casing because it's real quick and easy. We're going to go ahead and get these onions blended in with this beef. And then we're going to go ahead and get it seasoned up. So this is looking good. Everything is nice and blended up. You see all of this grease that the meat they made? I'm going to go ahead and drain that oil. I'm going to just leave a little bit of the oil in the pan. If I was making some spaghetti, I would leave probably about a quarter to half of this in there because that adds that flavor. But because we're about to make lasagna and put cheese on top of this, you don't want it to be all greasy. So make sure you drain all of this off, okay? Yeah, because I need that Garfield lasagna. I told him. That thing is amazing. Let's go ahead and season the uh, beef mixture up we're gonna go ahead and with our favorite oyster sauce go ahead and add a good enough amount to that hopefully by now we didn't inspire you guys to go ahead and try this because we use it all the time so that way you should know it's good if you don't have any of this just use some beef bouillon you're gonna get the same you know flavor but this is better a little garlic Let's 
some onion powder and we still want to season the sauce that we're going to put in there too this is just to give the initial meat some flavor on it so if y'all can find this in your store go ahead and try it yeah yeah mm -hmm. all right that's good let's see daddy about to ruin his dinner because he out there making a snack I don't know what you're making right now. So now we're going to go ahead and add this okay, Prego flavored with meat. <laughs> and you know I love my sauce. And I got it. I picked up two of the big ones just to make sure we had enough. But I was telling them I hope all this sauce fit in this pot yeah i know right so we may have to just do half of the other one for right now and then you know see how we look let's stir this up a little bit y'all know daddy then came in here on the fun part mm -hmm. adding his dang on salt you know what and trying to spy and see what it's looking like yeah because i'm hungry and how long it's taking to get done that's why i'm in there making me a a, a man snack what's that that's when you go in the refrigerator and you just put stuff together. So <laughs> I got, uh, what is that? Um, sour and cream. Go ahead and add some more that stuff. Sour and cream tater chips. Then I'm about to put some pepperonis and some mozzarella cheese on and melt them in the air fryer. Mm. And then I'm going to dip them in some homemade ranch dipping sauce. That I'm gonna make out of sour cream and the ranch over there. Show them the ranch sauce, huh? Mama. Bam. That's it right there. Y'all know y'all can get these in the little pockets at the store, but we got it right here in the bottle. Matter of fact, we don't even have that much left. Yeah, I know, because we gone. use it all the time. We yeah. use it on chicken, we use it on everything. Let me, let me turn this sauce down. I think it's popping me. So, yeah, that's looking good. Go ahead and just get this a stir. Because you want to make sure your sauce is covering the meat. You don't want to see more meat than the sauce ratio. We're going to be layering this on top of the lasagna. And you don't want your, you know, your lasagna to be all dried out. So try to make sure your sauce ratio to your meat mixture is good. And then I'm going to add a little bit of this sugar. Hopefully it's enough in here. Add a little bit just to you know, dot no, no, her, her acid. Oh, god, it's like really not even a lot in here. I'm trying to get the leftover little bit of crumbs <laughs> left over. All right, that wasn't a lot, y'all. It was just not really coming out, so you don't need that much, but just add it to your liking. And this is pretty much done. You just want to let this go ahead and just simmer down, let all those flavors come together. So let's work on the ricotta mixture. I'll say this is the most controversial part of the lasagna. A lot of people don't like the ricotta. It's just the texture for them. But the ricotta cheese adds that extra flavor and texture to the lasagna. So we always add it to ours. Nobody really complains in our house about it. So we're going to go with it today. I got a big one because I plan on making a big pan of this lasagna today. So hopefully it don't sit in the refrigerator too long. You know how I go. You're cooking for a big family. Everybody don't eat all of it. You know, you start getting tired of eating the leftovers, spaghetti and whatever else. And sometimes it's just hard to cook a small pot of something. So when I got this big thing of ricotta, I was thinking that to myself. So I'm probably not going to use all of this. I'm going to see how it's looking once we start. This is how it looks. It kind of looks like yogurt. But, you know, it's an actual texture to it. So I'm going to do about... Actually, I'm just going to go ahead and do all of it. Because it's really not that much. You know, if you really think about it, it's not that much. And it doesn't really matter what order you put these ingredients in. We're going to go ahead and add the spinach. 
like I said, that's going to sneak in those vegetables and then give your lasagna an extra little added taste. All I did was just took some frozen spinach, put it in the microwave just for a quick little second just to go ahead and get it soft and all of that water out. And that's it. You're going to need two eggs. Help bind everything together. There go one. And then there go two. Now you can stop right here if you wanted to, but I always add some type of cheese into our ricotta mix. Got these laughing cow cheeses. They're just a, uh, you know, a basic little cheese. It's not too overpowering. It's kind of like a cream cheese uh, texture, but it's a little different. This is the cheddar flavor. They really didn't have the one I was looking for today, which was the garlic one. So I'm probably gonna add a few of these in there. I got two of them because I didn't know how many we were going to actually need. I'm probably gonna do like four and then that'll be good. We're gonna go ahead and season it up. We're gonna add some of this garlic paste. This is real good. You know, if you like cutting up fresh garlic real fine and real small, just go ahead and grab some of this. This will take a lot of time. This will be a lot of time saving. Or if you buy those little uh, garlics out the glass jar, try these. These are really good. Daddy loves these. He loves the roasted garlic one. But the stores don't never have them. So when you see the roasted garlic one, those are the best ones. So when you see them, go ahead and grab them up. But this is just a regular one. But it works just as fine. And then to this, I'm just going to add just a little tad of salt. You really don't want to overpower this mixture. That's it. Just a little flavor. Just a little bit of pepper. And that's it. We got to add some more in here. Did I that yesterday? You did? Mm -hmm. okay. I got to probably tighten the top. Tell them how it tasted your pepperoni Oh my pizza. God, that was, that little struggle pizza I just made with the chips. Oh man, that was good. Mm -hmm. That was blessing by sitting. Right. And that was so delicious. You can never, ooh, ooh, ooh. and you can never stop with these chip pizzas. Exactly. These are so good. Okay, right down. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and just mix this ricotta mixture up. Make sure it's mixed up nice and good. Get all of that garlic in there. Make sure your um, pieces of that laughing cow cheese is mixed in good. Y'all know how to do it, okay? Y'all got it from here. It's just simple as one, two, three. And then I'm going to show y'all what noodles we're going to be using. Do y'all think we're going to be using the boiled noodles or the no-boiled noodles? You got to keep watching to see. Okay. Y'all see the sauce? It's just bubbling it away. Now that it's all nice and simmered, go ahead and taste it. You know, see if you needed to add anything. If something is missing, go ahead and taste it now. Because we're going to go ahead and start getting this lasagna nice and laid. So let me go ahead and taste it and see what we need. Can I take mine? Hold on, take this hot. And then I'm just going to go in with just a little touch more of that oyster sauce. And then this is good. I'm not going to make it too garlicky in here because we still want to make some garlic knots on the side. Oh, yeah. I didn't tell y'all that part. But, yep, we're going to go ahead and make some garlic knots on the side. That's going to go good with this. So, we're going to have a whole dinner. Now, here comes the best part, the fun part, the main part of this lasagna is to go ahead and get it laid. Ooh. So, first. If you've never done this before, you want to make sure you go in with a layer of the sauce first. Let me bring this a little bit closer to this pan. That way we don't make a mess. And I know y'all probably wondering, like, where is the noodles? You did not talk about these noodles yet. I didn't see you boil any noodles. And that's right, because we don't have to. We don't even have to. I got this ladle spoon right here. Let's go and go ahead and spread it out. Hopefully, we got enough sauce for this big old pot. It should be enough, though. We're going to make it work. This reminds you of the little lunch-style pans at, at the school. Or, you know, something like that because it's so big. But And then I like it because it's real deep. You know, you got the deep size on here. It's perfect for things like this. And then once you have that, we can go in with the noodles. The mystery noodles for tonight, right? Bam. Just like Daddy said, bam, 
we got the oven ready lasagna noodles these are the only ones that we use at first when i started making lasagna i never boiled the noodles i think i probably boiled the noodles like one time that just takes one step out of having to boil the noodles overcooking the noodles your noodles messing up or breaking up these already come in the sheet and you just lining it up now the good thing is you can be creative or do it however you want to when it comes to this part because as you notice as you get to the edges you don't have enough so that's the only thing but you can just take one of these pieces of noodles and just break it up until you get enough little pieces right there so i'm just gonna break it this way okay don't overcomplicate it like i say just do it how you want to and just keep doing this until you got the whole pan filled with the noodles all right so it's not gonna always be perfect you know once you do that little part but you see what the goal is right so then you're gonna go in with another layer of meat because you need something that's gonna help cook these noodles that's gonna bring that steam and moisture so you never want to just go in straight and put your cheese mixture on top of these noodles because it's not gonna help cook the noodles y'all gonna have them hard crunchy noodles in your pasta and that ain't gonna be good right and don't that's why i said don't worry about if this part is not all neat and pretty because everything will be covered up anyway you know so don't worry it's gonna be okay and this can get a little messy so make sure you pull this pan close enough to your stove while you pour this on top and just keep doing this make sure everything is coated make sure all them noodles is covered in that sauce don't be leaving nothing poked out like I said, you want to make sure everything cook. And we're going to still cover this with some foil. So that's going to help cook the noodles as well. All right. That looks good. That looking good. So now you're just going to spread this out. Make sure it looks nice and, you know, even. Because you're going to be able to see these layers once you cut into your lasagna. And you don't want to have a little lopsided or uneven lasagna layer right okay then smooth it out so make sure you clean spoon off because now we're going to go into the ricotta cheese mixture and what i'm gonna do is just dollop just to make sure i got enough i'm not going to spread it out just yet so just do like little dollops just like that y'all and then once you got your little dollops on there and then just try to go in and smooth it out okay that's all you gotta do you need to add a little bit more in between add a little bit more and try not to spread it too hard because then it's going you know get muddled into the sauce so a light touch is all you need just a light little touch and it's the same thing you would do like if you're making those stuffed shells that's the same type of mixture that you're doing right here and this layer don't have to be too perfect so don't try to waste too much time trying to make sure it's going to get a little muddy trying to get everything mixed in but it's all going to come together at the end so it's okay just try to make sure it's you know smoothed out just enough all right and then we're just going to keep doing this until everything is oh hold on hold on almost forgot we got some mozzarella that's gonna go right on top of this like i said we want to make sure it's a nice little stringy look to it once we cut into it so i'm just gonna just drizzle these little pieces just like that right on top all right 
that's good. Uh -huh. Now we're gonna go to the next layer. Do the same thing one more time. And then this is one pack of noodles. I'm gonna have to break open the next box. You're gonna need like at least two boxes. It don't even really matter what size you making. By the time you finish doing one layer like this and then having to go on the sides, you're pretty much gonna end up using like two boxes. So just try to get two boxes. And if y'all wanna cut them in half, if you got enough space, you know, to lay it just like that, go ahead. As long as you just make sure everything nice and even. Now go ahead and just repeat everything from the first step. Now this is the presentation layer, this is the last layer. So we're gonna go in with the rest of the mozzarella. I don't think we need all of this, but we're gonna do like half and half. You need that cheddar cheese on top that's gonna give your lasagna that nice golden caramelized color that you're looking for. And then we're gonna go in probably with another little bit of this um, mozzarella. Look, we never said it wasn't going to be cheesy, right? Who don't like a good cheesy lasagna? That's why Garfield likes it so much. You ain't wonder why. All right, now for the top, you want to make sure you just spread this all around. The shutter is more so to give it that nice, pretty color that you want at the end. So just make sure this is nice and even. And then we're going to bake this in the oven. I'm going to cover it. Make sure those noodles cook all the way through on 375 for about, I'll start it at 40 minutes. See how it's looking. In the meantime, in between time, we're going to go ahead and start on these garlic knots, these garlic bread knots. One of our favorite things in the house to make, and it's so easy. Instead of buying your garlic bread, you can make them just like this. Make sure you get it all on the sides, all on the edges. Y'all don't forget about them when you're doing your hair. Don't be forgetting about them when you're cooking too. Right? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, for the presentation look, once it come out the oven, just going to sprinkle some of these little parsley flakes just to make it look cute when it come out the oven. Oh, yeah. All right. And then there we go. We're going to go ahead and cover this. And then try not to smush your foil on your pan. So that way when you take your foil off, all your cheese won't be stuck to it. Just lightly put your foil on there. Once we get it cut, we'll go ahead and take the foil off. Get it nice and brown on top. Y'all, we're going to need a butter sponsorship in a minute, too. As much butter that we be over here trying, all right? I'm going to go ahead and take a whole stick of butter. And we're going to go ahead and put this in the microwave. And you want to do this towards the end that your lasagna is cooking. Go ahead and prep this so it can just sit. And all you got to do is just put it in the oven. But don't make them too early because you don't want them to be cold. All right, so that's all we need for that part. And then you're going to take your, uh, your parsley right here. Just go ahead and put it in there. Make sure y'all can see what we're doing. What we're doing here. This recipe that we're doing with these Pillsbury um, biscuits. Y'all can do these so many different ways and so many different shapes. It's endless. And then you're going to take your garlic powder. Just go ahead and sprinkle some of that. Put this in the microwave for about 
30, 40 seconds. You know, your microwave is different from everybody else's. So I'm not going to tell you how long just until the butter is melted. So I think we're going to go with the twist today. Since we went with the bowls the last time, we're going to go ahead and do the garlic bread twist. That's all y'all got to do. I hope y'all not still scared to open up these Pillsbury biscuit cans. You're going to take one biscuit. You're going to cut it in half. And this is the same thing you're going to do if you wanted to make the, um, what is it? The garlic bread sticks. You're going to do it the same way. And just keep, keep on rolling it until you get it long enough. So now, once you got it rolled out, you can stretch it a little bit like that too. Just don't stretch it too hard because it's going to fall apart. So now you got your butter melted. Look at that. It look real creamy. <laughs> All right. So you're going to take the whole thing. You're going to take this whole little piece. And you're just going to dump it right in there. Simple, right? So make sure it's nice and drenched. And then you're going to take it out. And then you're going to put it on your sheet and then make your shape. Y'all see that? So if you want to leave it like the garlic stick, you just leave it straight. Or if you want to do like what we about to do. Uh, what I want to do. What I want to do. The more you do these, the better they're going to look. Because you're going to start getting the hang of it. Getting into your rhythm. So the first two may look a little wonky. It's all right. Just keep going, y'all. Your kids, your family, they still going to eat them because they still going to be good. Like I say, you can stretch them out just a little bit. So I got all the biscuits twisted up the best way that I could for right now. They are a little time consuming, so try to do these a little bit ahead of time before your lasagna is ready, so that way everything can come out nice and hot. The timer just went off, so I'm going to go ahead and take the foil off the lasagna, let it go ahead and get brown on the top. I'm going to go ahead and put these in the oven right now as well, while the oven is still on 375. Ooh, y'all see that lasagna? Yep. Right out the oven. Y'all, we all as Garfields tonight is going to be happy. Happy. And then let me go ahead and show you how we're going to dig into it. Y'all know yeah. we normally start in the corner, right? Yeah. But I think tonight, tonight, we're going to go ahead and just show y'all right in the middle. And then we got some sides. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh, it's pasta night. All right. So what we got first on the plate is some salad, cause it's nothing like some pasta with some salad, okay? And then we have those garlic knots. Look at those, look at those. Now, all of them didn't come out like the same. It's okay, but isn't that cute? And then to top it, you just gonna take some of that butter, y'all. Daddy didn't already been out here, you know, in it. And some of these biscuits. So this is what we got left. And you want to do this while it's still hot. You're just going to go in on top and just dab. Ooh. Ooh. Give it that little glistening, shiny look. Y'all know. Now for the main event, the best part, the fun part, the main part. Boom. 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 Ooh. Y'all, are we creating a sin? Or what? Oh, hell. By us going into the middle like this. Ooh. That looks All so right. good. Now, you're going to go in. Scoop. Do it fast. Make sure you got your plate ready. Because you know it may be a little hot mess when you take it out. So let me go on this side. So we're going to take it up. Oh, yeah. Put it right on there. Lost a little bit of the cheese. Just gonna put that right back on top. And then then boom. Boom. And then then boom. Boom. Oh, hold on. We gotta put the salad dressing on top of the salad. Hold on. 
Now for the dressings, we got the creamy Parmesan and we got the creamy French. Y'all go ahead and guess which one is my favorite, which one is daddy's favorite. Do, do, do. Just drizzle it right on top and that's it. There you go. Get back well with nice the little homemade lasagna with some garlic bread twist and some salad. I'm gonna go ahead and let it cool off for just a second because I'm not about to burn my mouth. But look at these noodles. Y'all see how limp those noodles are? They are done. Those yeah. no boy noodles, don't sleep on them. Just save some time. They'll be good just like you like them. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and taste it. You wanna go ahead and taste the cake? Yeah. Okay. Y'all see how easy it is just to break apart those noodles? That's how you know they done. That ricotta and everything else. Hold on. What are you doing? It's tasting. Go ahead and get a big old bite. Let's go ahead and get a bite. Let me taste. I'm going to taste snacks. Oh, hot. Hot cake. I'm tasting. Okay. I'm Mmm. That is so good. Hold on, it's hot. Let me blow it for you. Hold on. Hold on a bit. Hold on, look. Come here. I can't. You can't reach. No, blow. don't put it in the way. Ooh. Mm. Mm. That's real good. Okay. Make sure y'all go ahead and share this recipe. And go ahead and subscribe because you're not going to know when we're coming back for a new one. And so you go ahead and hit that subscribe button so y'all won't miss a video. And see you later. See you later. Roll with your fam.